The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Doesn't matter where you're at as long as at this time you're here. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have today? Well, we've got uh, a more, a lot more of uh, the end of the world discussions. Um, I don't watch CNBC much, if it ever. I just happened to turn on the TV to catch the weather and uh, caught uh, Josh Brown pounding the uh, desk saying the end is nigh. Um, I don't know. I've been to New York uh, in a while, but there used to be a guy that would just stand out there on the uh, center grass drip um, and yell and scream, the end is nigh. And... Eh. I wonder if he's still there. Um, but, uh, eh, no end yet. <laughs> it's always like those people, like the uh, the people say that they're the, uh, you know, who was it? That, what was the name of that gal? I'm trying to remember now. She was on, oh, Miss Cleo. Yeah, she didn't know that her company's going bankrupt and uh, didn't know much uh, the, the IRS was coming to get her. Eh. Of course, she didn't pick up any lotto tickets either that won. Anyway, um, predicting the future is very hard. And uh, many people claim to do it. Um, good traders, eh, they kind of react to what happens and what they're seeing. They have to live kind of in the moment. Um, you know, a lot of times you can see things coming. Uh, but generally, if you can see them coming, they're uh, actually, uh, they're going to make you wait. They're going to make you sweat. They're not going to make it easy for you. It's not just going to, you see something that happens five minutes later. Generally, it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that warms up to, uh, to the, uh, the point where it actually starts to boil over. Uh, anyway, on uh, today's movement today, uh, it was very much reticent of yesterday's move. And that is it came down, the volume all but stopped. Um, there was some volume in the indexes, but when you got down to, into a lot of the individual stocks, nothing happened. Now, yesterday, I think we were doing a little over 6 billion shares. Um, we were doing about uh, 5.6 uh, billion, so about 400 million less or 500 million less than we were doing at this time yesterday. So push that down. And again, I'm not a big fan of deciding that the end of the world happens during expiration week because most of the time it doesn't. Um, most of the time it does, you get kind of a really good idea that things are bad before it starts. And then on Friday of the expiration week, everybody's been bearish all week and the market's been selling off. And then you get these huge rips on the last day. And I, I think that's Tomorrow is kind of uh, that kind of idea, maybe not as bad as some of the other big sell-offs uh, in the past, but um, just watch stocks. Uh, I think I said at 11 o'clock or 11.30 in the den that I was looking at uh, my ticker and just wondering, uh, you know, is it frozen? Did the computer freeze up? Did, was something actually moving? Um, I'll relaunch this just in case something was going on, but there was nothing. There wasn't a whole, you know, you get the first volume, you know, maybe in the first hour or something, and then it just goes deader than a doornail. And as a trader, if you're trading very short time frames, um, you know, it's kind of boring because there's nothing going on. Those five minute uh, bars don't mean much if there's nobody trading. Uh, if you're a little more medium term trader like me, um, then you start going, hmm, things that make you go, hmm. And that is uh, lots of movement and uh, no, uh, no uh, price, significant price or volume change together. 
Uh, and of course, uh, it's always the same thing. Uh, you see a lot of lightning, but you don't hear the thunder. Eh, things are off a little bit off or something. There's got to be the two things go together and uh, just wasn't seeing it or feeling it. Uh, the option market makers got just slightly more bearish last night. I'll look and see what they've got going on now. But uh, I, I mean, they've pretty much been around that, uh, well, from last night. I, they're very sure that they can get it up to 4,500, maybe to 4,525. We'll look at the numbers tonight. The one thing that really disturbs me is that nobody is short uh, other than the equities themselves. I mean, they're not, they're buying in the monies. They're not buying out of the monies, at least in the S&P 500. And that was the only thing that really troubled me going into this morning's uh uh, out that and having uh, internet problems at the office. Uh, but uh, other than that, everything looked kind of good. In fact, one of the stocks uh, that I've been looking at for uh, maybe 10 days, looks like it's going to go right up and park itself where I thought it was on options a week ago. Those looked very, very good. Uh, another one I had uh, was problematic um all the way up until about an hour ago and uh now we're uh we're running to the uh end zone and we're going to spike the ball i think on that over the next couple of days uh it was one of the most heavily shorted stocks uh yesterday and uh they pushed it down couldn't get it more than a buck lower uh now it's i don't know 70 75 cents higher i think it's uh it, all those folks shorting it the last couple of days probably going to reward me well on some very uh, inexpensive options. And of course, uh, if you've been listening for a while, you know how much I love expiration week because you can find, if you can find really good setups, uh, you can really get that three or 400% return uh, if you're buying them. And I don't know what these are right now, but eh, eh. I was adding all the way through the morning. Um, also had another really good huge run in one of the uh, stocks in the Tech Insider. So I'm going to do a little superior dance. In fact, I'm thinking about doing the rest of the show in interpretive dance. But uh, we've got Tim Ward on in the next segment, so probably wouldn't be appropriate. Maybe tomorrow, an entire show of interpretive, interpret, I can't even say it, interpretive dance for the markets. Hi. Anyway, uh, that's about it. Um, options expiration tomorrow. Everybody has been talking about it, the end of the world. Generally, as I said yesterday, when people start talking about that, even people that I uh, uh, really uh, uh, think a lot about, it's normally something that almost everybody starts bringing up. Uh, at least a couple of days, if not three days before. I suspect that if we're going to have some kind of over-the-cliff Thelma and Louise moment, that it happens next Wednesday with the Fed. And uh, that's kind of it. Um, we'll be back with Tim Ord here in a minute. There's just not that much to talk about. Um, but give us a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, and you can talk to Tim. He's got three charts. We're going to go through those and uh, your calls. Be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back uh, with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Uh, Tim has been writing a newsletter for over 30 years. He's won many, many different awards for Timer of the Year in uh, different disciplines. Uh, I want to uh, thank Tim for coming back here today. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me on again. So um, well, we got you over some charts. Uh, yeah. Well, before we get uh, to those, we do have somebody that wants to take a look at Planeteer. Uh, the symbol on that is PLTR. And uh, while you look that up, Tim, uh, yeah. I will uh, welcome uh, Rob from St. Pete. How are you doing today, Rob? Hey, David. Uh, yeah, I, I just had a question on Palantir, uh, yep. what you were mentioning. Um, and just it looks to me like it's breaking out and just wondered what yours and or Tim's thoughts were on the stock okay. ltr well hopefully he's getting his charts up at the morning uh, right. at the moment on it uh they had news today and have a fairly nice uh, decent volume pop uh that's going into the previous high that previous high at 2750 had 42 million shares uh, and that was on June 28th. So you're breaking through there today. This is a, a company that does a lot of double top secret stuff. So they don't have many uh, big press releases, uh, but they had one on uh, on uh, information for cars for uh, probably chasing us around for every uh, mile we drive. But uh, Tim, have you been able to get that chart up and take a look? Actually, I went to uh, stock charts and it uh, won't come up. Um, I've got it. I've, uh, P L T R. Yeah. Oh, P P as in Paul. Paul, oh, Larry, Larry, Tom, Tom Robert. Robert. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, what was that again? Paul. P L T R. P is in Paul. P right. is in Paul. L is in Larry. T is in Tom. R is in Robert. Okay. P. L. Yeah, sorry about that. I thought that was a T and it wasn't coming up. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, evidently a fairly new stock. You know, if, uh, 
looks like a, you know a sideways consolidation was going on since 2000. It really started in, in January of 2000, and the market just kind of went sideways. And if we do a Fib, Fibonacci relationship here, let me do it real quick. Yeah, it, it, well, depends how you do it, but um, you did a 50% retracement. And actually, you did have a couple of big volume days, one in August, and actually you're doing one today. So um, after you do the average daily volume, you got market pushing up on higher volume basically since the, the um, well, the July low, actually it's late July, early August. So, and the market did do, do about a 50% retracement from the low back in November or actually October. Um I don't know. It looks like to me, be my guess, we're probably going to go back to the February high, but around 45. Uh, at least take a shot at it. That's what it looks like. What happens there, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, the market, yeah. you know, the longer the base, uh, normally the longer the, the rally phase. And the thing's been basing since last, you know, over about a year, year and a half. So, and finally, you get yeah, the time to go with it. So This was a, a fairly new IPO. They deal in a lot of top secret stuff. So it's not like you get uh, news that moves this thing around very much. Uh, this is one of the few contracts that they have that probably, uh, if they told us about, they wouldn't have to kill us. So it's, uh, <laughs> it, it is all top, it's all top secret CIA and NSA and all that kind of stuff. So there's not a uh, whole lot. There's only a couple of companies that are kind of like this. Um, but uh, yeah, that 45 uh, high has uh, pretty high volume, 171 million shares out there. So eventually, it's probably that high volume high is probably going to get retested at 45 eventually. Yeah, uh, earnings is like back. I think in the first week of November for the thing. So you're probably not going to hear a lot more news until then on it. But uh, the news so far is pretty good. Yeah. Okay. And also, you know, if you look at the March low, it looks like a. Uh, to me, that's probably a potential head bottom because it failed to hold the blow of the previous low that busted through. So you probably at the neckline, uh, neckline, if you connect a uh, a trend line from the March high uh, and you draw draw it across to the you know the forward, you know the highs going forward, you're right at that uh, neckline right now, and you got volume pushing against that neckline. So um, could get kind of rewarding here in the next several days. So, trends so it's up. kind of a kind of an inverse head and shoulders, maybe. Yeah, the, the May low, I'd call the head. That's how I'd yeah. look at it, and yeah. that's the neckline right now. Okay. So very, very uh, good. Okay. Okay, we're Thank gonna. You. Thanks for the call. We're gonna yep. go thanks, back guys. to uh, Tim Ord's charts, uh, which I have already. Uh, got up here um you want to start off with number one here yeah i just wanted, I just wanted to point this out um this is actually the bullish percent index for the gold miners index and what the bullish percent index does it measures the percent of stocks that are that are in that index that are on point and figure buy signals uh so you know when this ratio is at 100 in other words 100 percent of those stocks in that index are on buy signals and when it is at zero, it's a uh, another hundred percent of the stocks are on sell signals. And right now, there's four point three seven percent stocks are on buy signals in the gold miners index. Now there's about ninety five percent of them on sell signals. But this is kind of a trend contrarian indicator. And I did what I did was put an RSI, which is in the top window of of the bullish percent in index, when everybody basically heads to the door the exit door, um, and the faster they go to the exit door, uh, the more likely that you're looking probably at an intermittent term low. And so it's, the RSI kind of measures the velocity of the bullish percent index decline. And the faster that velocity is, the more likely that RSI will fall rapidly. And that's what you want to, want to do. And it's kind of a form of a panic, um, kind of a form of a panic uh, situation. And uh, yesterday, this is updated to yesterday's close, and there's 4.37 percent, or yeah, 4.3. The RSI yesterday closed at 4.37. 
and previous times is below 10 percent, uh, which is basically all those blue uh, horizontal lines, uh, are the times when the RSI was on this index was below 10. And it came at the March low. If you look at last March low, it, it nailed that low. Um, and that's the last time. So it's been over a year, well, basically a year and a half since the RSI fell below 10% on the bullish percent index. So um, it, it's a it's an indicator that at most you could have it, you know, triggered maybe once or twice a year, but it's been about a year and a half since it's got this low. So what I'm saying is there's probably a washout low here. Okay, we're going to be back in just a minute with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Um, and we're looking at this chart. We have kind of a question that comes uh, together here uh, for Hector. And he wants to, he says, GDX for Tim Ord is uh, the buy today. So. Okay. Oh. Um, or is it close? Please. Are we in the neighborhood? <laughs> well, it's... Um... I don't know. You're looking at this chart. Uh, there's a lot, you know, we blew down 
but we're down for over 4% right now. And if you look at that chart on GDX, basically you're, you're at a eight-year trend line, major support around that 30 range. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's been going up and down around the 30 range for the last uh, month because uh, we hit it back in mid-August or mid-September. So, uh, and today the, you know, f- f- uh, the RSI got down to 4%. It, to me, it's pretty much a little washout. You know, so, you know, you got to buy when everybody else is selling. So here we are. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. You got to buy when they're crying and sell when they're yelling. That yeah, that's right. Sense. Exactly right. And actually, if you okay. ever look at this chart a little bit closer, uh, go back to the RSI of that bullish percent index. Every uh-huh. time you get a surge uh, of the RSI above 90, I didn't draw those lines in because the graph gets too sloppy. But. Uh, back in the uh, high, we had what was it uh, in uh, May there, May May June high. The RSI uh, for that bullish percent index got above ninety. In previous times, got above ninety was a short term high. So, and now we're just the opposite. We got the RSI below ten. Um, the same scenario, but this time on the buy side. So, uh, okay. I thought that point that out. So, all right, and we want to move on, or we got more questions on this? Well, we've got the GDX down here at the bottom. You've got major support put in here. I don't. I think we covered it. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, chart number two. Okay, we've okay. got that up now. All right, chart number two uh, is actually uh, the middle chart is one I want to talk about, and. Uh, what it is, this is the uh, summation index for the NASDAQ Composite Index. The only thing I want to point out on this is um, big declines can occur when this index is below zero. Well, we, we got below zero back, you know, eyeballing it here. It looks like July time frame. And if you notice, NASDAQ Composite, which is a window above it, uh, still managed to push higher. Uh, so what this say is, when the NASDAQ summation index falls below zero, you know, large declines can occur, which is those red vertical lines I have listed there. So, you know, like last March, it fell below zero, and you had that last March decline. We had uh, another big decline, looks like probably September of uh, 2020. We had a decline. Uh, we had one in probably June, July, uh, uh, or this would be, yeah, July of of, um, of this year, it kind of had a quick decline. And, you know, we've been below that since, and nothing's really happened. Uh, will it happen? Don't know. But what this says is uh, the, the leadership of the uh, NASDAQ composite is real narrow. And when it gets narrow, you know, bad things can happen. Normally, you're in a bullish trend, you know, I don't know, over 50% of the stocks are carrying the rally. And here we don't have that. So very few stocks are carrying the rally, but those few stocks are doing extremely well. At some point, that could stop. And when that stops, you could get big uh, corrections. And that's what I'm pointing out here. Also, uh, uh, seasonality is not favorable right now this quarter. And that runs into, uh, you know, possibly 1st of November. So the next 30 days are better. Uh, could be difficult for the markets. Uh, will they have large declines? Maybe, maybe not. But this is not the best time to put money into the market. The best time to put money in the market is when everything's blowing up out there, and we really don't have that here. Uh, so, you know, am I expecting a big decline here? Not really, but um, I'm thinking more of a trading range is going to develop. And uh, so this is kind of a warning sign that this is not a good time to add money to the market right here, unless the summation index gets down to you know below like 800 or something, that'd be a better time because uh, the market's pretty oversold when it gets down there. But um, so it's kind of time to be careful because seasonality here and the uh, Nasdaq uh, summation index is below zero, which is not ideal. So it's uh, kind of I guess pull pull back the bullish horns for the moment. So. Um, we can go on and actually look at another chart 
that if he had to invest in, um, if we want to take a quick look at chart number three. Okay, let's see. Here we go. We got chart number three. So this this is a this is the summation index again, but this is a summation for the uh, Nasdaq or for the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange (NYSE). And if you notice, uh, you know Nasdaq's way below zero, and the NYSE uh, summation index is still above zero. Yesterday it closed at plus forty three, uh, which doesn't predict. Uh, a large decline will occur here. So, of, of the two markets, I guess Nasdaq is 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 in a weaker position compared to the NYSE. Um, so, can we still get a decline? Yeah, um, you know, it's kind of hovering around the zero, still above, but hovering around the zero. And I did uh, with blue blue lines point out the times when the summation index did fall below zero. And it caught some you know, big declines, you know, like last March of last year, it fell below zero and and caught that one, caught the one back in uh, 2018. Uh, there really wasn't one in 2019 at all. And will we get one this year? Don't know. Um, but uh, um, also watch the uh, uh, yeah, CNN fear, uh, greed fear gauge. And right now it's at 37. And normally, big declines don't happen when everybody's already scared. 37 is, is pretty, people are kind of scared. So um, I think we're just going to bang around in a trading range, you know, and, and really not go down that much. We may go down some, but uh, not a whole lot because the fear gauge is, the fear gauge, CNN's fear gauge is already at 37, and it very seldom gets in the 20s. Uh, so we're pretty, you know, Everybody's kind of in a fear right now, anyhow. So um, I'm thinking the trading range is going to develop between now and probably first of November, and and uh, um, then from there start marching higher again. So I don't really see a, a top of any consequence here, even though we fell off about two percent already, which is not big. But um, well, so we're going know, to the break again. We're going to the break. We'll be back in a minute with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle.com. Um, that's pretty much it. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And we're back with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Um, I've got this uh, fear and greed index up from CNN, and I don't watch it a lot. So at 38, is that a, a big deal? Um, actually, uh, uh, let me get to it here real quick. Um, uh I got a bookmark somewhere, but I got so many bookmarks. If you scroll down, um, you can see where it was in the past. And uh, there it is. Fear right now we're at time the, at the bottom. Yeah, if you scroll down, you know, the lowest it's ever been was basically that March 2020. If you scroll down, you know, I'm eyeballing it's got into the teens. Um, you know, and the highest it's ever got was, you know, late 2020. It looks like about 90-something. So if you get around 20s and 30s, you know, a lot of times you're, you're uh, setting the lows. You know, previously in 2017, it consistently stayed below 20 for, uh, you know, several months there. So that's if, if, when you... Did you scroll down? I don't have you uh, yeah, on TV I've here. It. I've got it here. Yeah. So it kind of tells you where we are. So um, 38 is low. You know, if it's in the 20s, it's probably better. But it's pretty good. If you got a rally going, this thing consistently stays low. It's usually a pretty good sign. You know, if you get above, like I said, 90, um, you know, things are getting kind of hairy. But, you know, it did good. Pick out the March low pretty good. And then whatever that high was. It was probably October of of uh, 2020. I don't know what happened there because it's not. I don't have a graph right next to it. But um, in, in general, it's uh, uh, kind of looking at you know we're we're in a minor or lower range right now, um, and there's already fear here. So it's that's why I'm saying we're probably not going to get a huge decline from here. But if we were up around 80, then uh, to me, you know, September, October could be a, a pretty bad month. But, you know, if the market even goes down here a little bit, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting at, you know, near 60, a little bit below 60. And with a 2% drop in the market, which is not huge, then we're already below 40. So if we drop another 2%, we'll probably be below, you know, 20, be my guess. So that's why I'm saying I don't think there's a 10 or 15 point or 10 percent, yeah, 10 or 15 percent decline in the market here, just the way that's kind of set up because everybody's already kind of scared already. So I was, and everybody's was talking say, about seasonality here too. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say the big talking heads on CNBC, from uh, Kramer to me just turning on Josh Brown, uh, hitting Josh Brown at lunch when I was looking for the weather. Uh, these guys are all talking about the end of the world. So generally, I want to fade, fade those guys on the other side. But uh, there is at least uh, in the media a lot of people talking 
of that, and they either tend to be totally wrong or a bit early. So I was just yeah. didn't know. But do you look at anything else for that kind of uh, bull bear sentiment? No, actually, I, I try not to watch those guys because normally if the yeah, no, I meant, all those guys. I meant, I meant something Pardon? else, like the bear bulls, the bull bear studies, and that kind of stuff. Or is this kind of it um, for you now? Well, no, I, I watch this, and I, I do watch the ticks. You know, yesterday we had a, a gob of down tick readings, which is kind of a sentiment indicator, but it's much more short term. Also, watch um, well the National Association of Individual Investors thing. Uh, right. If you notice, uh, uh, that took a big dive yesterday. Uh, so you know the uh, that ratio. I, I don't have it uh, right in front of me. But that ratio took a big dive uh, also. So there's a lot of sentiment besides uh, uh, this one here, you know, if you're a greed gauge. Uh, the individual investors are pretty bearish, too, probably because of listening to, listen to Kramer and those guys. Uh, so uh, <laughs> they, they kind of have an influence on the market. So I don't, I don't think market is set up for here for anything because of the different sentiment indicators right here of uh, a big decline. Uh, so but I'm do thinking that, you know, a trading range uh, could develop. And uh, that, so I'm thinking that's probably what's going to happen over the next month. You know, the market might try to go up here, can't go up. We come down to these lows again or maybe just a little bit lower. And that's all it does. So um, probably leadership, there's there's evidence that the rotation in the market is going to go uh, on here too. So that's the reason why I think NASDAQ, you know, the leadership there – could change, and the Nasdaq, uh, if this, any market's going to get hit, would be the Nasdaq just because the summation index is way below zero, and that could, you know, rotation out of the high flyers into some other sector that uh, may pick up steam. But um, far as the S and P's concerned, I think it's pretty much going to hold steady in, in this in this vicinity, if not a little bit. You know, it could go a little bit lower, but not a lot lower. So, um, you know, to get that year-end rally, I think there's going to be a really big year-end rally that will uh, that will hit new highs. And you need that fear in the market, you know, the wall of worry. You know, Joe Granville's thing back in the 70s, 1970s. And if you don't have that wall of worry uh, in the market, uh, the market rally are really not worth that much. So you got to have that wall of worry to really uh, uh, get the market going to the upside. If everybody thinks the market's going to go up and they're positioned for it, there's really no buyers left to really drive the market higher. So uh, the wall of worry thing is, is really important. I think the next several weeks will create a bigger wall of worry, and uh, then we'll get the, you know, the November-December rally or mid-October to November-December rally. So that's how I'm kind of viewing the market. So nothing okay. real big here to the downside, but you know sideways maybe a little bit lower than, but but uh, not a whole lot much difference. So good enough. Well, I want to thank you for being back on. Uh, it is Tim Ord. That's O R D of the Ord dash Oracle dot com. Uh, he's got uh, a book on Amazon, and that's the secret uh, of price and volume. And, of course, his newsletter, which you can find at his website. Thanks again, Tim. All right. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. You bet. Okay. As we come back here and wrap up uh, the rest of the show here, uh, if you want uh, any of the charts, uh, just uh, email uh, me at path at tfnn.com. We'll be glad to send them to you. Or if you want the link to that CNN page, we can do that, too. Um, anyway, as I said, I kind of always like, I think the last couple of days, I always uh, am kind of a contrary uh, trader. Some people call me a, a little more than that. Um, try not to be too objectionable. I just didn't see anything coming in here today. Um, you know, options still show that they're fairly bullish. Um, we'll see in the next couple of days, but I'm looking for 4,500 or higher. For Friday's close tomorrow. Everybody, you know, you tried it again to push the market down. It just didn't stick. So uh, we'll be back and wrap up the show in the last second.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get ready to wrap up uh, the end of the day here tomorrow, of course, options expiration. I'm looking for uh, at least a uh, short bullish uh, pop before we probably uh, have some kind of sideways action going into the Fed next Wednesday at 2 and uh, see whether or not anybody is actually going to uh, uh, call him on uh, actually – tapering or if he's just going to talk about it until we all want to stone him. Eh, I think stoning is underrated, but uh, just me. Uh, anyway, uh, continue to look at the rest of what's going on out here. In the end, it wasn't such a, a big deal, but, uh, you know, it's even being down here, you can't get the uh, UVXY really uh, positive. It's down 32 cents now. And, uh, you know, maybe it does nothing tomorrow. But my guess is that everybody probably going to try to short it at the close yet again today. So you're probably going to get some kind of gap up in the mor morning. The only thing that bothers me is nobody's really buying any big downside protection. Um, last couple of days, the uh, uh, out-of-the-money puts in the S&Ps have been very low, like 20%. Uh, compared to 80% uh, calls. So 
that's the one thing. There, there haven't been that many of them, though. But uh, other than that, everybody is kind of a dour looking down. Uh, everybody wants to sell, but doesn't seem like many people are pulling the trigger. Um, we continue to see a lot of stocks that I saw earlier in the day that they were just trying to wash them out. That, again, makes me think that maybe we are going to have that rally uh, that Tim spoke of uh, kind of in October. We've got about another week or so and maybe eight, nine day trading days before the end of the month. This is general body on the street starts moving out of the old stocks and gets the new stocks. Sell when you can, not when you have to.